Jean Romans, stay right there because we're going to talk about this now. I want to bring in Katrina Pearson. She's the national spokeswoman for the Trump campaign. And Angela Rye is a CNN political commentator and former executive director of the Congressional Black Caucus. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thanks for being here. Katrina, the economic numbers appear healthy. So, so why do so many Trump supporters feel we're on the verge of economic disaster? Well, I think you've mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the operative word, which is appear. Um, very easily 11 days before the election, but I don't think any working class America is getting up and cheering on a 2.9 percent economic growth because the fact remains the Federal Reserve is still pumping money into the economy, free money, um, which leads to a false economy. And now that we have globally interest rates still very, very low and sometimes negative in cases, it means it's an artificial stock market. Working people need jobs and they need increased wages. And because of wages and jobs, we don't mm -hmm. have the middle class that, that are able to either uh, borrow money or have the income to sustain consumption at this point. So I think the real test is going to be what happens when interest rates go up. Okay, so um, I want to, before I get to you, Angela, I want to go back to Christine because Katrina said a number of things. And yeah, you... well, uh, interest rates, well, this kind of report shows the economy is healthy enough to withstand higher interest rates. A lot of people think the Fed will raise interest rates and start to undo all of that loose economic policy by the end of the year. When you take this number with um, jobs growth that is still looking strong for people who have a job, by the way, we do recognize there are uh, a host of people who have been left out of the labor market. Um, but when you look at uh, the job market numbers, consumer confidence numbers, just yesterday there was a CNN ORC poll that showed 54 percent of people say America is on the right track. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a better feeling about I, the economy overall. I will say, though, and I'll post this to Angela that um, when I went to Ohio last week and I talked to voters who live in Trump country so to speak those voters who were in favor of Donald Trump they said that um, their biggest fear is economic collapse and while they may be doing well now they just have a real fear of the future so in order for them to even consider Hillary Clinton she's gonna have to make them feel better about the future why can't she do that well and I don't know that is that she can't do it Carol I think the reality of it is 2007 and the mortgage bubble bursting and that crisis is not that far from here, right? That's a very recent uh, trauma that many people in all over the country have faced, particularly in communities of color. I would like to go back to uh, something Katrina mentioned, which was the middle class is hurting. Well, I would go to what we've learned from the Census Bureau last year, which is the middle class and poor people had the best year they've had. Um, ever since 2015, in 2015, um, in quite some time rather, I won't say ever, it says that real median household income was $56,500 in 2015. That is an increase from 53.7 from the year prior. I would also uh, point to you the fact that the unemployment rate is much lower than when President Obama started. Um, black unemployment is still double the national average, and that has been the truth for 40 years. That is not President Obama's fault. I think the reality of it is, if we peddle this narrative, this conspiracy theory that the economy is horrible, will create that unrealistic and unfortunate fear in the lives of people. That doesn't mean that their economic well, condition isn't real. I just want to interject. Address. I want to interject this it. because Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump said something on the campaign trail because he does paint, especially in the black community, a very, very bleak economy. In fact, um, this is what he said in Toledo, Ohio, just yesterday. Let's listen. We're going to work on our ghettos. Are in, so the, you take a look at what's going on where you have pockets of, of areas of land where you have the inner cities and you have so many things, so many problems, so many horrible horrible problems so Katrina you heard uh, Mr. Trump there say um, ghettos in, in black communities and um, I think that many black Americans would say you're not really taking into account the whole of the black population well, and I think there's also a segment of the black community who has been consulting Mr. Trump on this issue who would disagree with you because there are severely uh, depressed and suppressed communities out there. Uh, but what we're not addressing still is the Federal Reserve's impact into this economy. And if we're talking about a three to 4,000 wage increase among the working class, which has completely been wiped out by Obamacare premiums, exactly. not to mention Hillary Clinton wants to raise taxes. This does not look good for the middle class. So can I just respond to this really quick, sure. Carol? Um, I think it's really important that when we have conversations like this, they're rooted in fact. So let's talk Absolutely. about... Absolutely. Let's talk about 
what Donald Trump could actually be saying to black people that would resonate and be based in truth. So there's an access to capital issue. People like Donald Trump take advantage of Which the fact that... Said. No, that's not what you said at all. But people, people like Access Donald to borrowing Trump, people, is capital people issue. like, I know you don't want to hear this because the truth burns, <laughs> but uh, people like Donald Trump actually take for granted the fact that they have readily available access to capital. People in my community oftentimes don't. But let's talk about the ghetto, because Donald Trump, as we know, is a real estate developer that has taken advantage of things like gentrification. That's how he ended up keeping people out of neighborhoods where they could actually Earn, the, earn more income, Katrina. That's an issue that he should be addressing. Well, he actually has addressed that, Angela. No, and because, because facts do matter. Mr. Trump has also talked facts about matter the issue with borrowing let, let in Katrina the black respond. community. Let Katrina respond. Let Katrina respond. Mr. Trump respond, has please. addressed, if you've listened to anything he has said about the black community or his urban development, he's talked about the problems that we have with black Americans being able to access capital. And you can go back to the, when he testified before Congress on how to fix the economy. He talked about having more affordable housing for minority communities. And he's worked with Jesse Jackson and the Rainbow Push Coalition to help black <laughs> Entrepreneurship. Those are the facts you never see on CNN. No, Angela, well, Angela, I know Angela is a former, um, you know, she was with the Congressional Black Caucus. So is that true? And ran it into the ground. I'm sorry, say that one more and time. And ran it into the ground. I ran the CBC into the ground? Absolutely. <laughs> Which that is, is laughable. Why, that is, is laughable. Why you're not aware of Mr. Trump's no, uh, Katrina. positions. All the way no, back no, to the because 80s and wait, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me, wait, 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 stop, stop, Katrina, what are you talking about? It's ridiculous. What are you talking about that Angela ran the Congressional Black Caucus? I'm eager ground. to hear this. What well, did I, mean, I do? The record, the record is out there. Look at where the finances were, and so I think it's interesting. Oh, I'm that sorry, honey, Katrina. Uh, We're Katrina, having an economic Katrina. discussion, but we don't want to talk about the actual facts of Mr. Trump's policies when it comes to urban communities. Carol, the fact can that I please respond to the personal borrowing. attack at this point? So there, let me just let me just okay, help stop, you. stop, stop, stop. So, okay, Angela has to respond to these charges well, of that she does. ran. If she's going to okay. call me a liar, then of course let's have a personal discussion because I am tired of coming on CNN and completely having Mr. Trump's policies lied about consistently because he has addressed every last one of these issues which is why his support in the black community is on the rise uh, good luck with that um, lie as well now now let me respond to what see? you your direct yeah you're right see because you're lying so the criticism about the Congressional Black Caucus, we actually had a very successful run with the Congressional Black Caucus. Perhaps you heard about the jobs initiative where we went into communities of color to ensure at that point when the black uh, unemployment rate was double the national average and higher than it had been in years, we worked on that. We went to five cities and urban areas to address unemployment specifically. After that jobs initiative, we provided nine recommendations to the Obama administration that then manifested themselves in the American Jobs Act. You want to talk about what happened with black unemployment? Your Republican Congress chose not to address jobs, chose not to consider that jobs recommend, those jobs recommendations, that American Jobs Bill, that is what happened there. Now, in terms of finances, running finances into the ground, you want to talk about uh, congressional member organizations' budgets? I give you Newt Gingrich, one of your other surrogates, long before I was even in in elementary school, dear, the Newt Gingrich snatched congressional member organizations' budgets. The CBC never had a budget, so I don't know which organization you're talking about. Perhaps you should get your facts together because we had a budget that was run by member representational allowances. That okay. there was no money management okay. there. Now going back okay. to the we, economy we, because that's we, we what just, this was we, about. We, you're I'm still stop, wrong. I'm going to stop this now. This is veered in a direction I never expected. It was crazy. But... Like what are you talking about? That's slander. I could sue you, Katrina. <laughs> Lies. Oh, oh my True. gosh. Okay, True. so um, I would make one final point okay. to bring us back to where we began, Carol, Thank if you, I Christine. could. <laughs> and, and, and everyone, you're welcome. The, 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 the point I would make is that we've been in seven years of an economic expansion, and it hasn't felt like it because we were so afraid about what happened to us uh, in 2008, 2009, right? We really couldn't believe the economy was moving forward, but it was. But it won't move forward forever because the economy goes in cycles of ups and downs and we're overdue for the economy to falter. So your vote on election day is who do you think has the policy to cushion you when the economy inevitably falters again? The jobs plan, the energy plans, tax plans, education plans. So insults aside, we need to really soul search about who do you think is going to be able to lead the economy because it will have a pullback eventually. All right. Thank you, Christine, for injecting sanity into this segment. <laughs> anyway.